James chapter 5 as we continue in a series. And I said in previous messages from the book of James that as God gave us a desire to do this series, he did the same in different locations. Specifically, Dr. Morocco began to preach a series just ahead of us. And then I believe uh, Pastor Andrew on Oahu and different ones began to preach the book of James. It is a profound book. And for those of you that have been a part of KSM and a part of our mentoring groups, it is one of the sections of Scripture we've been encouraged to memorize. We're given a choice to memorize either the entirety of the book of James or Matthew 5, Matthew 6, and Matthew 7. And they're very similar in, the, in, their, uh, in their teaching. Book of James chapter 5. So we've been moving along. This is the penultimate message meaning the second to last message in the series. And uh, as I was studying, I took a look at, see where Dr. Morocco was at in the series, and he just preached this last weekend, so we're nearly synced up. I had a great, great joy listening to him preach this very text this afternoon, and um, he did it so good, I decided to take a bunch of his stuff. So, <laughs> James chapter 5 and verse 7 through 12, let's read the word of the Lord. Be patient then, my brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble, everybody say don't grumble. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters or you'll be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Verse 10, brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You've heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. I want you to say that. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you'll be condemned. Another version says everything else comes from the devil. Wow. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Move in power. Amen. You may be seated. We do have notes. I, uh, I, 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 I did this, I studied this text today, this afternoon, a little earlier in the week, and then did my usual routine on Sunday. By the way, if you, if you were not here for the message this morning, the altar of incense, it was a powerful word. And I guess it was a beautiful word. And the only reason I say that is I've had three separate people tell me, it's an unusual thing to say about a word. That was a beautiful word, Pastor. I thought, wow, God's word is beautiful. Amen? Amen. Anyway, that's available online, and you get it on Facebook or, or uh, on YouTube. We have our own channel there. You subscribe, and uh, you can use YouTube as a, as a library for, for challenges and finding answers and resources, you just go and search our YouTube channel and it'll bring up a message. Just pick any, any, any lesson or any area of life you'd like wisdom in. It's in there. Finances, relationships, on and on and on. So you go and check that out, doing a series called The Victorious Church. Why is that? Because the church is victorious and most people think the church is some lame duck, sissified thing. We, 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 listen, you know where the power is? It's not in Washington, D.C., the power is the church of the living God standing up, declaring, declaring, decreeing, proclaiming. It's time for us to take our place. And so we've been doing this series of the book of James. And I uh, studied and it's on patience. Now I'm just going to be honest with you. I have a challenge in the area of patience with certain things. And one of the areas I'm challenged with patience is I cannot stand being late. I enjoy being early. Really, I just want to be exactly on time. Now, somebody said, if you're not 10 minutes early, it's probably Pastor Kirsten. If you're not 10 minutes early, you're late. 
He's always early, and I deeply appreciate that. If we have an event, I know he's going to be there, and he can be a go-to person if he picks up his phone, and uh, I'll call him, and he can take care of things that sometimes fall through the crack. Deeply appreciate people that are on time. I do not like being late. I'm, on, I'm, la I'm late on purpose for certain things. You're like, Pastor, you always walk in here a little late. That's on purpose. Why is that? Because I just don't like talking before service. Why is that? Because I'm focused on doing what I'm doing right now. I, I pray, and I'm, it's just the way that I work. So, so, so I, I'm late on purpose, but mostly, <laughs> I'm late. I, you got to be careful. You don't use that as an excuse. Anyway, I don't like being late. And there are occasions where certain folks run a little bit later than I'm running. And it's at those times I have a tendency to get impatient but i i heard a story by dr morocco about his father and his father is italian and apparently he didn't like being late either and apparently esther morocco would make him late on a regular basis and so he would he would say andiamo which is italian let's go and uh and then she would beep the horn and be in the car and then he would drive off and go around the block and come back and get her <laughs> Some of you don't think that's so. At least he came back. <laughs> and in all honesty, some of the biggest fights I've ever gotten in my marriage are because we're running late. And, uh, and it's because I've had a lack of patience at times. And I know that's not just me. I know some of you lack patience also. This is a powerful text where James deals with something we all need. Patience. We need patience because it's an answer, it, it's an answer to our dilemmas. You see, we, the, there's two things that happen if you lose your patience. One, you get angry. That's not good. Or two, you get full of despair. Has anybody felt full of despair because something didn't happen? You lost your patience and you gave up hope. That's because you lost your patience. Hebrews 10, we just talked about that. It's about being patient and suffering, patient and seeing things come to pass. So how can we have more patience? It's a great question. Look at verse eight. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. How can you have more patience? Our focus must be on the Lord's return. You're like, what? Seriously, like how does that help me have more patience? Because if your focus is on the Lord's return, how many of you know when he comes, he sets everything straight. He fixes everything. And so James says that the answer of patience is focusing on the Lord's return. When you focus on his return, it means he makes all things right. Come on, that's encouraging. He says there's a, it's also a picture that there's an end to your negative situation. I want you to say, oh God. Come on, say, oh God. Thank you. There's an end to my negative situation. Come on, one day time is going to be no more. And you don't have to worry about late because there will be no more time. It's a beautiful picture of him coming and fixing everything and that God will intervene. Come on, God's gonna intervene. That's the whole nature of God's return. The whole nature of his return is his time frame is, is, is ended or continued to the point where now he's intervening in history and in time. When he returns, whatever you're going through, it's going to change. Come on, you missed a great place to say amen. So it's a, they, the early church would encourage, them, encourage themselves to say, whoo, the Lord's coming. They would end services by Maranatha, which is even so, come Lord Jesus. That's what that word means. The church today doesn't think about that too much, but it's something that'll help you with your patience. He gives this illustration, agrarian illustration. Let the farmer encourage us because he, he believes God will send the rains so too we can believe that God will intervene for us. He's talking about a farmer who sows seed and believes God to bring forth a harvest. That's the way we're supposed to be. Anybody ever try to watch water boil? It takes 10 times longer. Well, no, it doesn't, but it seems like it. The right amount of heat in water causes it to boil over a particular time. But if you stand there and you watch it, it's interesting how it just seems to take longer. God is able to intervene in your life just like he's able to cause a seed to burst forth. You gotta believe that God will intervene. 
So as a farmer has patience for the harvest, we need to have patience too. We're, we're in time. He's outside of time. And uh, look at verse 9. Do not grumble against one another. No, oh, snap. Some of you just did that a few minutes ago. You're grumbling about how loud the sound is or grumbling about this or grumbling about that. It's too hot in here. It's too cold. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. We have a tendency to grumble. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you'll be judged. I mean, that's intense. In other words, when you lose your patience, you end up grumbling against your spouse or whoever's making you late. You can end up grumbling against, against really anything. And if you grumble, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you're all there, say amen. amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 10. Can I borrow your Bible, Pastor Christian? Here's what it says. Thank you, sir. And do not grumble as some of them did. So this is warnings from Israel's history, 1 Corinthians 10. And he's saying, don't grumble if some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Killed by the what? Destroying angel. Literally, when you grumble, you have the potential of releasing death. I'm going to go over here because you guys just don't believe me. That's what the word says. It says that they grumbled, Israel grumbled, and released a destroying angel. Did you know that if you grumble and you murmur and you complain that you can release death on your life? There is actually a, a destroyer. It's a demonic entity. We've preached on it many times before. It's found from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Abaddon in the book of Revelation. A destroyer. And you can release that demonic power, a destroying angel. You can release a demonic on your life by grumbling. Let's all repent. Oh, God, forgive us. Forgive us for grumbling. Forgive us, forgive me for grumbling. I forgive you. Amen. It's good to repent. Look at the godly examples. James continues on. Look at the godly examples of patience. The prophets who continue to speak in spite of opposition. We're so quick to get offended. They, they, the prophets of old, they just keep speaking the truth. Keep speaking the truth. Some of you, if you get your feelings hurt, you just quit, run, turn, heel, go to another church, do something else. We need to keep ourselves from being offended. I said it earlier. I've had times where I wanted to quit, and for whatever reason, I quit many things before coming to the Lord, but for whatever reason, I had an encounter with the Lord. And I, when I first got saved, and I, I hit some opposition. It was personal offense, and I was, I was rebellious to leadership. I didn't like Pastor Ann. She prayed loud. I thought she was unusual. Oh, yeah, the first service I went in, I said, who is that lady praying so loud? <laughs> Pastor Ann can pray loud. I'm just telling you, she can't. I used to be like, man, can't these people just chill out a little bit? <laughs> I was offended at this and offended at that. And I, they got to the place where I was just like, man, I quit. And I remember saying I quit in a service. It was before I met Pastor Karen. I remember saying I quit. And the Lord just said to me, really? I'm like, uh huh? What are you quitting to? And I heard this scripture. I had enough word, the word of, enough of the word of God in me to hear the words of Jesus to, to Peter. Are you two going to go away? And, and Peter says, where are we going to go? You alone have the words of eternal life. And I, I heard that come out of my spirit. What am I going to quit to? This is the only people that really love me. It's the only place that really, really cared for you, really. Where are you going? I don't know. I didn't want to quit. It was really, I was just hurting and I needed healing. The prophets of old continue to speak in spite of opposition. Listen, if you're going through difficulty, just keep going. Keep moving through. Keep repenting. I recently got a text from, from someone. It was more like a book. 
a couple books, a couple volumes. Anybody knows folks that send volumes? That's a phone call. It's not a text, it's a phone call. All right, but this person just wanted to tell me about how unjust everything was. And, and listen, if you think I'm talking about you or not, it was in a totally another land. It has no one, because this is a common thing that happens. If you're offended right now, don't quit. Just, just get over it. Talking about how, you know, their gifts weren't received and they weren't honored and they weren't made a leader and they weren't this and they weren't that. It's the same story I've heard a hundred times, Pastor Ann has heard it a few thousand times. It's the same story, but a different person. They're rejected, they're hurting, they're, they're bitter, they're angry, they need healing. And they just want to point the finger at everybody. They're victims. Nobody said it. Yeah, you just need to get healed. Lift your hands to heaven. Come on. Be healed. Listen, if you have no friends, can I just help you? If you have no friends, it's not them. It's not their fault. It's you. It's you. You're hurting my feelings. I'm glad. You need to get over it. You need to get healed. I want to love you enough. Come on, better are wounds from a friend than kisses from an enemy. Oh, everything's great. You're awesome. You're just so beautiful. No, you're not. You're not. You got a bad attitude. You need to change. You're impatient. You need help. <laughs> I'm not feeling the love right now. Can we just lift your hands to heaven and worship God? Come on. Hey! Hallelujah. I deserve better. Really? I remember having that argument too. You know, the Lord has a way of fixing your wagon. I remember saying to the Lord, I deserve better. And I remember the Lord saying to me, it was just a, an argument I was having, like, God, I don't deserve this. I deserve better. And he said, actually, son, you deserve death. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, that's what you deserve, really. No, really. No, really. Some of you have an argument that actually you're really good and you don't deserve that. No, we all deserve death. All of us, thanks be to God through Christ Jesus who died in our place and we can be redeemed, we can be cleansed, we can be healed, we can have a, come on, we can be new creations in Christ. He's given you, come on, a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, fifth chance, some of you on like the hundredth chance. It's mercies are new every morning, it's morning somewhere. Just be thankful, thank God for his, I want justice, I want it. Do you? Do you really? Mercy. Everybody say mercy. mercy. James talks about Job, who continued to believe. Go to Job 42. Continued to believe when, when others did not. People blamed him, said it was all his fault. Always keep in mind that you'll be blessed if you persevere. <laughs> blessed if you persevere. Something I thought about when Pastor Job 42. We'll get there in a moment. Something I thought about when Pastor Ann was talking and sharing from Psalm one of the Psalms, I forget what Psalm it was. 30 what? 37. I talked, I, I, I was, had the, the thought as she was sharing that all the time I've been in the church, every family, this is, this, is this is my experience, Pastor Ann. Every family that's ever come into our church and stayed, I don't mean the ones that quit, and there's many, there's hundreds of, of examples thousands of examples, ones that came in, got saved, stayed, planted roots, got discipled, got, got, learned how to live life. They end up so ridiculously blessed, and there's so many examples. Their whole family ends up getting saved, like literally their whole, am I right? Am I right? Sometimes it takes 20 or 30 years. Some people are more stubborn and stupid than others. And it takes a little while. Sometimes it's 30 years to see a whole family salvation. But my experience is I've been a part of this for as many years as I have. Almost, it is 30 years. 30 years. I've been a pastor for, I don't know, longer than Pastor Kirsten. But I've, I, <laughs> it's a personal joke we got. I came, first came in in 1992. So that's 30 years. And in that time, I wasn't so faithful in the beginning, but God helped me. 
And in that period of time, everybody that's come into this house, I can't tell you about another church because I don't know about another one. I could just tell you about this one. Come into this house. They stayed. They submitted. They learned. They grew. They got discipled. They end up with blessed marriages, blessed children, blessed finances, blessed emotions, blessed, 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 blessed. The ones that quit, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happens. I'm not, I, have, I have no plans on ever quitting. I'm going to contend and have patience. Can you say amen? I'm going to persevere. Always keep in mind that you'll be blessed if you persevere. Job 42, verse 10. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. You know, one of the great joys of persevering is you get to look back and see what the Lord did. You know, I, I've said this before, but this building project that's seven years going on eight, I want it to stay seven. Almost there. I wouldn't trade it for anything. If I knew how difficult it was, I don't know if we'd have wrapped our arms around it. You know, but aren't you glad that God only shows you what you can handle? And as you move forward, he causes you to grow and expand. And you know what patience is like? Patience is like love. Some of you were mean as a junkyard dog, but now, now you have more love than you've ever had before. You, you, lo you love, you can really love people. Some of you, I couldn't love people before. I didn't like them much. And now your capacity to love is so much more because you're growing and becoming more like Jesus. Do you know that patience is like that? I'm getting more patient, Pastor, Pastor Karen. Hallelujah. Your patience will grow. It's actually fruit of the Spirit. Somebody said, don't ever pray for patience because if you pray for patience, then you're going to have all kinds of frustrating things that cause you to have to have patience. No, I just, the fruit of the Spirit. It's fruit of, come on, it's fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Oh, my. It's a joy to look back and to persevere. This building project, as I've said before, I wouldn't trade it for anything because what it's put on the inside of me, what it's put on the inside of you, what it's put on the inside of us is one seriously tough church. Y'all still here. We're all still believing along with thousands of others, believe in God, contending, praying, full of faith. And I commend you for your perseverance. We will richly be rewarded. And I look back in my life, and I look back in the lives of so many others that I know that persevered in the face of great trial. And it's a joy. It's a joy to see what God will do if you will persevere. Come on, Job could have quit. He ended up with twice as much. Would you like twice as much? You might have to go through what Job went through. I mean, I don't know, but you have to persevere. Persevere, everybody say, I'm going to persevere. It's an aspect of, of patience. And the, reason, the reason we can have patience is because the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Amen. Verse 11, as you know, we count it as blessed those who persevere. You've heard of Job's perseverance. And have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Compassion and mercy. Compassion. Aren't you glad? He's compassionate. Compassion is a key for healing. Compassion is a key for having patience. He's patient with you. I said he's patient with you. He's been so patient with me. It's merciful. Compassion feels what other people feel. Sympathy feels bad for someone. Compassion feels what they feel. Feels pain. Some of you are moved with compassion. You feel other people's pain. When my wife and I was, I was talking just bragging on Pastor Ann and some of the things we walked through. Anytime we get near someone who's lost a child, I'll just tell you, something comes on us. We, we have a compassion. There's an anointing to help people who've lost babies. We lost a child at 15 minutes old, and he died horribly deformed. We understand that. We've been through that. God carried us through that. And, you know, as a result, we, we can be compassionate to people. I, I struggle with tremendous addiction and dysfunction. I have, I have compassion for, for those who've gone through that. 
I have zero codependency, so don't try to come and ask me for money for your addiction. You asked the wrong guy. I've had people try to hit us up and manipulate me. Man, you're the wrong pastor. You're talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> I had somebody come and just straight lie. It was an excellent liar. Had a spirit of lying, I'm sure. Phenomenal lie. And as I listened to it, I just heard the Lord say, he's lying. He's a drug addict. So I said, when's the last time you used drugs? <laughs> just manifested right there. I'm like, hey. <laughs> Let's uh, get you into transformations and get you delivered. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. <sighs> Impatience leads us to say things we shouldn't. Oh, my goodness. Verse 12. Like exaggerate the problem. I've seen this. I've done it. Or make rash vows to God. I've done that too. Lord, forgive me. You say you're going to do something and Swear you're going to do it. Or using religious jargon to, to not do what's right. Turn to Matthew 5, verse 33. I mean, Jesus fought against a whole system like this. The crazy games that people pray. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 33, worship team, please. Again, you've heard it said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord, the vows that you've made. But I tell you, do not swear on oath at all, either by heaven or by God's throne, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or, footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you're not gonna, you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. And Jesus was dealing with these crazy religious games people would say. Things that people would do. Don't do that. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Have patience. Amen. Did you get something from the Lord? God bless you. Pastor Daniel Bracken here. I hope you enjoyed the service with us here at Kings, Alaska. If you've never received Jesus, won't you do it now? If you've never given your heart to Christ, won't you do it right now? Would you pray with me? Just pray right out loud wherever you are. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Let me pray for you. I pray, Holy Spirit, touch, fill, help, strengthen, break every chain, and use these that have prayed that prayer to change the world in Jesus' name. If you prayed to receive Christ, won't you let us know? We'd love to help you grow in the things of God. Text us at 907-357-2065. You can see the number on your screen and text SAVED, and we'll help you grow in the things of God. God bless you, and remember, God's on the throne, and the devil's been defeated. Peace.